Good morning, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and uh, my my buddy David Zills, the apologist, is back. How you doing, man? I am doing well. I am waiting for the warm weather to stay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this is the the depression that is Midwest spring, and the sun actually makes it worse somehow because <laughs> now we know that it's possible. Um, that's that's super great. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I had a question for you. Um, it, it popped up in the comments. Uh, so I'm going to kick it over to the expert. Uh, are there other religions or faiths that uh, that claim to have a resurrection narrative or is it just Christianity? Yeah, I saw that in the YouTube comments. That's a really good question, a really important question. Uh, I think um, I don't have an exhaustive answer to that question, which maybe is a little disappointing, <laughs> but I can approach it from two angles. Um, one is that there are claims of resurrections in religions, um, but the ones I'm aware of, these are mythology claims. So, you know, maybe you have some Greek god who dies and rises or some Egyptian god who dies and rises and all these things. And there have been claims that Christianity borrowed its resurrection narrative from these other religions and that Christianity is not really unique. Um, so there's that. Um, this is something that I think was popular a while ago, but it's since been discredited, this theory that Christianity borrowed the resurrection narrative. And there are two main mm -hmm. reasons why it, this theory doesn't work, that the resin narrative of Christianity stands apart from these mythological claims. Um, the first is that, first first of all, the uh, the... Jesus' narrative came in the context of Judaism, so it wasn't likely to be influenced by pagan mythology. That wouldn't have been something that the disciples or Paul especially would have deemed credible. They wouldn't have, you know, because they were devout Jews, they would they would have believed God is one, Yahweh is the only God. These other things are things we shouldn't play with. And so there's, there's that aspect. Um, the other thing is that when you look at the parallels between the mythological resurrections and Jesus resurrection. If you hear them stated out of context, it sounds like, oh, wow, these are the same story. But if you go and actually read the original source material, the ancient sources, these things are nothing alike. And so, mm -hmm. so the lack of parallels in the Jewish context just make this really not a feasible theory. Um, but there's a, an even deeper issue, and that is that the claims about Jesus are historical claims. They're claims that go back to eyewitnesses who said they saw and experienced Jesus alive after his resurrection. We spent time talking about that. And that's something that the mythologies don't have. These mythologies are like once upon a time in a land far away, there was this person that nobody can verify. And maybe you know, people don't take these seriously as if they actually happened, or if they do, they're just, you know, it, that's the kind of blind faith that Christianity is not. And mm -hmm. so the fact that these are claims about an actual historical per person that people could know, that people could verify, that is unique. That's something that Jesus has that the myth mythological stories don't. The mythological stories are like Grimm's fairy tales or something like that. They're, they're not claims about an actual historical person that could be verified with evidence. And so in that sense, Jesus is unique. And this is where I think C.S. Lewis talked about, or was it Tolkien talked about, in Jesus, the myth became fact. The All these mythological stories about dying and rising and immortality and gods and all this, they were just fairy tales until Jesus. And in Jesus, these mythological constructs were the reality behind them, which is Yahweh entered into history and became a testable fact. And so we have a story that's a resurrection that sounds mythological, but we can actually test it with evidence. And that's where Jesus is unique. Um, now, so that's the mytholo mythology category. There's another category. Well, let's look at the other religions and the people who founded them, and let's see, did they rise from the dead? And they don't even claim that they rose from the dead. No no Muslim is going to tell you that Muhammad is still alive. I mean, or same with Confucius or the Buddha or Joseph Smith. These people are dead, and it's acknowledged that they're dead. It's not even claimed that they rose from the dead. 
And so that's the thing that really sets Jesus apart is that not only did he, is it claimed that he rose from the dead as a historical rather than mythological event, but there's evidence to back up the claim and you can test it and test alternative theories and show that they don't work. And so the resurrection of Jesus really sets Jesus apart. There may be stories of resuscitations in other religions, just as there are in Christianity. Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead. People are brought back from near death today um, after a couple hours, um, but they still die again. They're not immortal. Jesus is the only one who's come back never to die again. And so this question is important um, because if Jesus' resurrection is unique, it gives us comfort that we can't have otherwise. And so if you think about life after death and the fact that we all wonder what happens when I die, you know, that can be very scary. Maybe you're thinking about it as an event that's possibly 50 years out. Maybe you're on your deathbed, but you can wonder, you know, is is all this Jesus stuff real and you know, maybe I'll be reincarnated. Maybe, maybe we're all going to hell. Maybe like, you know, science might claim we're just going to, once the brain chemistry stops, there's nothing and our consciousness just ends and the light goes out. And that all these things are very real concerns and real fears. And nobody has gone past that barrier and come back. There are reports of people having near death experiences and coming back. And I think some of those are compelling evidence that there's a soul independent of the brain, you know, there's an immaterial soul independent of the physical brain, but the only one who has really gone past permanent death and come back permanently is Jesus. And that's, that's a theological claim, but it's first and foremost, a historical claim that's testable. And so if you can probe this and say, you know, maybe Jesus rose from the dead, maybe he didn't, let's test it and let's see once you have a tested reassurance that Jesus rose from the dead, then you can say confidently, you can affirm what Jesus says in Revelation, that he holds the keys of death and Hades. And so it changes the way you face death because you can have confidence that, yeah, Jesus has walked this path before me and he's and he's going to take care of me. You know, like one of my pastors said, the one who will decide your eternity is the one who went to the cross for you. And that's very reassuring to know that this isn't just something that's make-believe. It's not just wishful thinking, but it's a historical fact. And you can you can doubt. You're allowed to doubt it and test it. And when you do, your faith is stronger and it can be very comforting. And so that's why this question matters. It's a really good question. Absolutely. All right. So where do we go from here then? Um, well, one second thing. Um We've talked about Jesus' uniqueness with the resurrection. He's also unique in claiming to be God, which is why it, this uh, since 2023 started, I really have been focusing on these in our conversations. Yeah, you know, Buddha said, "I found the way. This is the way." Aristotle said, "I said. found the good life. This is the good life." You know, Muhammad said, "I found the truth. God showed me the truth." Only Jesus said, "I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life." And so Jesus claims about his religious teaching is in some ways very self-centered, which other religious teachers are not. Other religious teachers or philosophers point beyond themselves to something else. Jesus points back to himself, which sounds very arrogant unless it's true. And the thing about Jesus' character, we've talked about this, is he wasn't arrogant at all. He was right. very humble. And so you have this paradox in Jesus that he has these incredibly self-important claims that his what you think about him is the most important thing that matters. And yet he's incredibly humble and selfless and clear-minded at the same time. And so both these aspects of Jesus claiming to be God and rising from the dead are unique about Jesus. Um, and the part about Jesus claiming to be God is comforting too, because you can think, well, how do I know about God? Lots of theories about God are out there. Maybe he doesn't exist. Maybe he's kind of everything and he's the consciousness behind everything, kind of the, the universal soul. You know, maybe he's like Allah, maybe he's like Yahweh, maybe he's like you know, like Joseph Smith says, and there can be this, this ambiguity and uncertainty, and it's hard to sift through it. And I think one way to cut through that is to say, rather than God being this mystery in the void, if the mystery penetrates into history and becomes a human, 
that interacts with people and they have concrete experiences with him and he tells them concrete things. Mm -hmm. This is how, how God is. And this is how he wants you to be. And this is how you can have a relationship with him. It can be really comforting because it takes away the anxiety of the uncertainty. And it says, now I have something concrete to point to the person of Jesus. Um, when I was in high school, I learned about two definitions of God, two kinds of definitions. There's let me see if I can remember them. A descriptive, a descriptive definition. And I think the other one was a denotative okay. description. And the descriptive says it's words. It's a description. It says God is like this. And that's what most religions are. They give you word pictures that describe God, but they're not God. They're they're kind of supposed to tell you what God is like. In Jesus, you don't say this is what God is like. It's something you point to. It's an example of God. So it's like the difference between saying define a dog as a four-legged creature that has some fur and a tail and usually is very friendly but you know barks and all these things you know that's a descriptive definition a denotative definition of a dog is when you find an actual literal dog and you point to it and you say that's what i'm talking about Look at that dog yeah and jesus is the second kind of definition about god it's not a bunch of people trying to figure it out and describe god on their own it's god coming down and saying you want to know what i'm like here look, mm -hmm. look right here. you know, and that's where, and that's where the apostles were emphatic. They said, you know, especially John in his gospel and epistles, he said, you know, no one has ever seen God. He acknowledges the mystery and that God is beyond our comprehension. But then he says, God, the one and only who is at the father's side, who in context, he's talking about Jesus. Jesus has made God known. And, you know, in one of his letters, John says what our hands have touched, you know, he talks about how they literally experienced walking with Jesus for three years and living with him, and that this was how they knew what God is like, because they had actually physically interacted with him. And so I think both these aspects, Jesus being God and Jesus coming back from the dead, they point for our heads to know Jesus is unique. And so I can answer questions that I couldn't answer if these things weren't true about Jesus, but also for our hearts, once we know we we can have confident answers to these questions, it's deeply comforting that I can know what God is like. I know what he wants from me, and I know what happens when I die, and I know um, how to be right with God so that I can have a good afterlife. And so um, these, are, these are key questions, and it all comes back to the uniqueness of Jesus. Jesus does things and says things that nobody else does. And so if you want to try to figure out what religion or philosophy should I follow. Um, one thing to always have in the back of your mind is, can they compare to Jesus on these two issues? And I think you'll find they can't. And so that's that's where Jesus is unique. And that can be incredibly comforting when you're wrestling with doubt and uncertainty. Absolutely. David, thank you so much for joining us today. All right. Thanks, Harrison. Have a good one.